What is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working on the GTO once again and I'm going to show you guys how we can install a flex fuel sensor and get it all wired up for under half the price of the kit selling online. Now I want to apologize this week's video is coming out late and next week's video might be a little bit late as well. I've been pretty good about trying to get one video out a week but as a lot of you know my father is a huge part of this channel and he helps me out a lot behind the scenes getting stuff ready to post, uh, getting parts together and things like that so that I have something to post and he also jumps right in there when I need him to to help me finish up a project so that we do have something to post. With that being said a lot of you might know that he has been diagnosed with multiple myeloma cancer for the last three years or so right at the height of COVID he got diagnosed and that's something that we've been battling and maintaining for the last few years which he's been doing very good on that front but earlier this week he wasn't feeling good so I started bringing him to different appointments and uh, doctor's offices clinics things like that and we finally found out that he had pneumonia they did a chest scan and so once we found that out, we got him right to the emergency room because with having cancer, your white blood cells are low, so your body can't fight off what it normally would. So we got him to the emergency room and he's been doing very well. He's actually getting ready to come home soon, but that's why this week's video is late because I've been spending a lot of time up there with him and uh, just hanging out with him and keeping him company and stuff like that. So please bear with me with this week's video and possibly next week's video being late. But with that being said, I will keep you guys up to date. So let's get through the intro and jump right into today's video. Alright guys, so now that we've gotten through the intro, I'm going to give you a quick rundown on the plan and parts that we're going to use in today's video. So for those of you that don't know, there are three fuel system videos on the channel already from when we built the full custom fuel system for the GTO. So if you want to know anything in more detail about a particular part of our fuel system, make sure to go back and check those videos out. They go into pretty good detail. But for those of you that haven't seen those videos, the short answer to that would be we have a custom basket that we made in the tank that houses a single Walboro 525 pump for now that has a Dash 8 feed line going to the front, to the rails, then to the regulator where it goes to a Dash 6 return line back to the tank. And that's where we're going to be tapping into today. We're going to tap into that Dash 6 return line. So we've got some parts over here on the bench and ignore from here over, those are for an upcoming video where we're going to be adding a second Walboro pump to our custom basket in the tank with a hob switch and everything else. So today we're just gonna focus from here over. And as you can see, we've got our Continental Flex Fuel Sensor, and I will link this package in the description below. It gives you an option to get a pigtail for this sensor, which I highly recommend. It will allow us to tap into this when we are ready to wire it. So I highly recommend getting the package with the pigtail. And it also gives you the option to get a couple fittings here. We went with the dash six size because that's what we're gonna be tapping into. It will allow you to tap into this sensor on both sides with a AN style fitting. So we got a couple of those right here. And then you're also going to need um, a couple fittings to tap into the actual line. In our case, we run all PTFE lines. So we got a dash six straight PTFE hose end. You're going to need two of them, one for each end. And this will depend on what type of line you are using and what size you might need AN, PTFE, uh, dash six, eight, whatever. So make sure to make that decision based off of what size line you're going to be using. And then you're also going to need a couple... Uh, pins here. You're really only going to need one of them. I got a few so that if we had any issues But this is going to allow us to tap right into the computer on the car so that the computer can see the flex fuel percentage from our sensor and make adjustments accordingly and then other than that all we're going to really need is some wire to get that thing wired up and a little bit of patience to make those lines so let's get this thing jacked up decide where we're going to put our sensor and get to work 
All right, so we've got this thing up on stands now, so I wanna get under it and I will show you guys where we're gonna plumb in that flex fuel sensor. I wanna get it all plumbed in first and mounted and then we will start working on the wiring up to the front. So let's go ahead and get under this thing. All right, so now that we're under the car, we can decide on our placement for our sensor. I think I'm gonna end up putting ours right about here. This is our return line. And then we can drop all of this stuff to get some room to work with this thing and then put it right in here. We could put it with these mounts, but I don't want the mounts to put pressure on this sensor and eventually break it. So we're gonna go up ahead of them and just zip tie it in once we have our hose ends made. So let's grab some tools and start dropping this line. I'm just gonna zip tie some of the stuff that we don't need right this second up out of our way. So we only have the line we're working with hanging. Cut these tails off so I don't poke my remaining eye out. All right, now we're ready to make a cut. All right, we're gonna wrap where we wanna cut in tape. All right, so since we've got our tape mark on here, we're gonna go ahead and just double check ourselves. Man, I'm going to make a mark with a sharpie where I want to cut it. Okay, so now that we are marked and ready to cut, I use some cable cutters. They work pretty well, especially for tight spaces on the car for the AN and PTFE lines. But you want to make sure that you don't have any pressure on your fuel system when we get ready to cut this thing. We don't want fuel spraying everywhere. And also you want to be prepared to catch some, especially in our case, this is a low point. So we've got some containers here to try to contain any fuel that's going to leak out of here. So now that we're all ready and prepared to catch some fuel, let's get our cutters and cut this thing as straight as we can. All right, that worked out pretty well. We didn't get a whole lot of fuel, so that's a good thing. I'm just gonna let this drip dry a second, try to get some remaining fuel out of this thing so that it's not leaking on us while we're working on this thing. Also, if you guys need, we do have how-to videos on AN and PTFE line on the channel, so if you need that, go back and check it out. Um, some pretty good information and tips in there on how to make these hose end fittings nice and easily. But today we're just gonna run through it super quick and throw these fittings together so that we can move on to getting the sensor mounted. All right, so just real quick, for those of you that did notice, we have two different colored fittings here. This is a steel fitting, this is a aluminum fitting. And the reason for that is yesterday, I overnighted a few things from Summit and I needed some fittings. I had this one, but I needed one for that end. And as you can see, I got three overnighted and that is the part number for them. And they are a dash six straight PTFE hose fitting from Fragola. But the one we actually needed was this one right here and this is for the real street black hose and apparently fragola has multiple different types of ptfe lined hose so that was my mistake but if you guys are using it make sure you order the correct hose and fitting because these ones will not work with the fragola hose that we have Luckily, I had this Russell's one kicking around in my uh, extras bin, and we were able to dig that out, and everything seems similar except for it is steel. So that's what we're gonna use for now. We can always come back and change it later, but for those of you that noticed, I just wanted to let you know. So let's get back under the car and get back to work. All right, we're gonna go ahead and slide the nut on. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and get the hard plastic coating cut off from around the actual line. Now we're gonna go ahead and use our special tool here to make this round in the center again. And then you're also using it to spread out the steel windings or weave around the PTFE line itself. All right, so then you make sure that your olive is bottomed out on the inner lining with the steel braiding going over it. And now we can grab our fitting and start working this into there just like so. And then slide the nut back forward and get the threads to catch and start tightening that thing up. All right, guys, so we finally got this one to start. Don't forget, this is that Russell's one, the Russell's fitting. 
because I didn't have another Fragola, so this one fought me the whole freaking way. Let's move on to the next one. We've got to do another one for the other side of the sensor, but that one is the Fragola fitting, so hopefully that one goes together a little bit easier. And now we've got both of our fittings on. So now we can go ahead and start getting that sensor mounted up underneath the car. Now we can start cutting the temporary zip ties that we had put in before. Now we can start putting the actual flex fuel sensor together here. Start threading both of our fittings. All right guys, so we got everything tucked back up nice and neat. I'm pretty happy with how it came out. The sensor's not going anywhere. I like where its placement is. So we're gonna go ahead, get the pigtail, get it plugged in here. I'm gonna splice some wires into the actual pigtail that we have, and then we will leave them long and run them up behind this heat shielding right here, and then come up right by the firewall into the engine bay where we will tap in for our power, ground, and our signal to the computer. All right, so we've got the pigtail for the sensor right here, and then I've got this wire. I forget what they call it, but it's multi-wire in one sheathing here, and we're going to use this to go from the pigtail all the way to the engine bay, and then we will split off from here, but it just happened to work out perfect. There's a white, a red, and a black, which is what we need, and then there's one more wire, but we're just going to cut that back and leave it in there. I just think it's going to run it a lot nicer and cleaner if we use this. So I'm going to go ahead and start splicing these and heat shrinking them together, make it look halfway decent and then we will run that into the engine bay. So I'm just going to go ahead, plug our sensor in, and then we're going to just start zip tying this right along with it. All right guys, so we've got our wiring ran up from our sensor nice and neat along the firewall and away from any heat sources or anything that is going to damage it. And you can see we've got a pigtail for our coil pack disconnected here and I've got some safety pins in it because I wanna verify which wires we're gonna use for power and ground. So we're gonna check that with the key off, make sure it doesn't have power, then turn the key on, make sure we have 12 volts there, and then we will get that wired up. And then lastly, we can run our wire across and I will show you guys where and which plug we need to tap into on the computer itself for the signal wire. All right, let's check and make sure we don't have any power here with the key off. We do not. Let's check this one. All right. Now, let's take these pins out real quick so it doesn't short anything out. Let's go in the car, turn the key on, and then we will come back and check for power. And we do have 12 volts. Alright, so this one does provide a good ground for us. So we'll go ahead and mark that one on the opposite end as our ground that we're going to use. Now let's uh, see if we can get this harness right out of there, make it a little bit easier to open up and easier to work with so you can put it back together nice and cleanly. All right, so we were able to get this whole harness out. Now it'll be easier to work with it, cut it open where we need to, and then tape it back up and make it look decent again. 
All right, so we've got our coil pack harness right here, and we tapped into those two wires that I showed you, one power, one ground, and then we took that package of wiring and split it off for our signal wire, and we've got that one coming out the back here so that we can tuck it up nice and neatly across the firewall and get over to our computer. So let's go ahead and plug this harness all back in and start tucking this up nice and neatly so we can get to the computer and tap in for that signal wire. All right, so now that we've got the signal wire over here towards the computer, I want to go ahead and kill the battery power real quick before we go messing around with the plugs on the computer. So we're just going to come back here to our kill switch, kick that off real quick. Now we shouldn't have any power to the car. Wanted to make sure we do that before we go mess around with any of these plugs. I uh, probably would be fine, but it's not really worth the chance. So gonna go ahead and get these things disconnected. We want this bottom one here. I believe it's the C3 connector. Pretty sure. There we go. Now this is what we're gonna be tapping into. That's what those pins that I bought are for. We're gonna be tapping right into one of these so that we can connect to one of those guys down there. So let's go get that pin and work on getting this all apart. All right, so you've got a couple little clips here that you gotta pop to get this top off. And you got that one, and then it comes right off. It's these little clips right here that snap into place. And now we have access to this connector. All right, so now we want to go ahead and slide this clip right here out. Not sure if the GoPro is focusing, but we want to slide this clip on out carefully because this loosens up all the pins and wires and stuff. Now we can flip this over and pull out the plug for the number four pin. So like I had said, we're gonna want pin number four, which you can see is right there. I started taking the blue uh, cap out of there. So we're gonna get that blue cap the rest of the way out of there, then grab our pin and put our wire together with our pin and that's where we're gonna be putting it. So let's get that the rest of the way out of there real quick. Finally got it, that right there. And that's what we're gonna be taking out. And now we can go ahead and use that hole right there. All right, and then it is as simple as putting the terminal onto the wire and sliding it in. As you can see, mine's already done. I forgot to hit record, but it looks just like this right here. And then this just slides right in. And then you reinsert that slide lock pin back in there to retain the terminals in the connector. And you are good to go. And you can wrap this back up in electrical tape and put the cover on however you want to do it to make it look nice and pretty and get it plugged back in. All right, guys, so it's as easy as that. We've got the new flex fuel sensor installed, plumbed in, and wired in. This video was not to teach you how to tune using the flex fuel sensor, just how to get it installed for a budget price. Like I had mentioned before, we're not gonna show you how to tune it. If you are a tuner or have a tuner, you guys will be able to figure that out. It's rather easy to enable the flex fuel tables. But I hate to cut this video short, but the hospital called and Pops is ready to go home. So we're gonna go pick him up. As always, I appreciate you guys for checking out the channel. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell. And we will catch you on the next one.